this video, I want to emphasize that selection by attribute and selection by location can be combined. Let's say that I want to know all of the robberies that have occurred in the 4th police precinct in a particular city. And you're able to find uh, two shapefiles. You've got a point file, which tells you where all of the crimes occurred, but then you also find an area shapefile of all of the precincts within the city. So let's start with that one first. In the attribute table of the precinct shapefile is a field that tells you which precinct it is. And of course, you're looking for the fourth. So I hope that you're already thinking about selection by attribute. Uh, you could construct an SQL query that would uh, ask which one of these is the fourth precinct, and then it will return that selection of one of those polygons to you. That, that indicates the fourth precinct. Then I also have that point shape file uh, or other kind of data file, vector data file, that shows the location of every crime in a certain area or you know every crime in the city even. And there's a field in that attribute table that tells me what kind of crime it is. You know, was it a robbery, a battery, an arson, a murder, whatever. So we want to just get to the robberies. So you should be thinking about selection by attribute again. Uh, we're going to query the attribute table just to select those that are the robberies. So to do that again, you would construct an SQL query to get at that information. Maybe the crime, uh, maybe in that crime data file, the type of crime is stored in a field in the attribute table called type. So you would make the SQL query type is equal to robbery, a type in double quotes, robbery in single quotes. Uh, and then this would query that crime data file for all features uh, that happen to be robberies. It returns that selection. So then I've got the results of two selection by attributes. I have the selection by attribute that gave me which one was the fourth precinct, and I've got a selection by attribute that gave me which of these crimes happen to be robberies. So then how do I find out which of those robberies are in the fourth uh, police precinct? Well, that's selection by location. So you'd run a selection by location uh, on those uh, uh, robberies that have already been selected by the SQL query and that relates to the precinct that has already been selected as well. The query might be to select all of those robberies that are completely within, that's our spatial relationship, completely within the fourth police precinct. And that would return your answer which of those robberies have occurred, uh, or how many robberies, or where are the robberies that have occurred within the 4th police precinct. That gets you the answer. And what we're doing here is chaining together operations in order to get to your answer. Executing these operations in that order will get you to the information that you're looking for. This is a little bit of a preview of exactly what we're going to be talking about once we complete or overview all of the parts of the core GIS vector toolkit. Solving problems and answering questions in GIS is all about chaining the right operations together in the right order. We're going to talk a lot more about that in future videos, but uh, I do want to uh, uh, point that out now, and that brings me to my final points that I want to make in this video regarding these selections. One of the most fundamental things that you should be able to do in vector GIS analysis is to be able to identify when the information that you need can be obtained through a selection by attribute and when the information can be obtained by a selection by location. I like for students to be able to call that out almost immediately when a question is posed. Whether or not um, a, a step in a particular procedure that you're designing requires a selection by attribute or a selection by location is something that you want to be able to immediately recognize. Also, even if all you knew was selection by attribute and selection by location, there are a huge number of problems that you can solve, and there's a huge number of questions you can answer just by executing these, kinds, these two kinds of queries in the right order. There's a tremendous amount that you can do. No, so you need to know these two different kinds of queries hands down. That's one of my most basic recommendations to anyone who's getting involved in GIS. Get to know SQL and all of the power that it provides. Then get to know all of the spatial relationships that your software package of choice happens to recognize. Well, and get to know the, uh, how the other software packages manage this uh, selection by location as well, so you can know if you need to move to another software package in order to have the right spatial relationship available to you uh, to query. This alone will give you a tremendous amount of GIS power. All right, well, we'll move on in the next video.